All right, so hello again. Unfortunately, uh, Mohamed Gabar, aka Don, couldn't make it to OrConf. Um, however, as one of the Libralane developers, I'm happy to um, give this talk in his place. So, um, yeah, let's start. And let's start with some exciting news because uh, finally Libralane is now officially released back in July. So Libralane is now community maintained under the umbrella of the Fossi Foundation. And probably some of you now are thinking, what the heck is Libralane? Maybe some of you still know OpenLane back from eFabless. Is this similar? Is this something else? So let's have a look at some of the history, at some of the background. Okay, so back in 2020, the Sky130 PDK was open sourced. And yeah, well, that was great. Um, and eFabless was tasked to do these open MPW shuttles and later uh, the ChipIgnite runs. They did not have an end-to-end, -end, let's say, a compatible open source flow. And for that reason, they developed OpenLane. And uh, it is, uh, of course, still uh, free and open source. Uh, it came with batteries included. Uh, this means all of the tools, um, they were uh, packaged via Docker. Uh, it is easily configur configurable. You had just one configuration file where you could set all of the variables for your design. And hundreds of designs on these open MPW shuttles, they were successfully um, designed with OpenLane. However, OpenLane also has its limitations. So at the time, it was developed on a very strict deadline, which means a lot of architectural shortcuts were taken. There's no proper abstraction in OpenLane. It's difficult to run just parts of the flow. For example, you want to get the placement of some macros right. Um, you always have to run the full flow, and do synthesis again, even if it's not necessary. Otherwise, it would have been very buggy running just parts of the flow. There was also, there is no standard way of reporting data about the design, metrics like uh, area, power consumption, maximum uh, uh, clock speed, and so on. Uh, it is also difficult to add custom steps to the flow, to customize the flow, um, integrate other tools. And finally, OpenLane is written in Tickle, a kind of stringly typed language, which yeah makes it easy to create a framework out of it, uh, which prevents uh, the users from shooting themselves into, the, into their foot. So all in all, uh, there were some limitations on open lane. So that's why I'd like to present LibreLane to you. Now, what is LibreLane? Actually, LibreLane was started back at eFabless, and it was called OpenLane2. It was planned to, uh, of course, um, replace OpenLane1 with OpenLane2, but uh, this did not happen uh, before eFabless shut down. However, OpenLane 2 was already used internally at eFabless to develop um, yeah, internal chips. So the goal was to be backwards compatible with OpenLane 1. And LibreLane, or OpenLane 2, uh, is a fully customizable Python-based flow infrastructure, which means it not only implements this, this single flow to go from your very log to, to the final layout, but you can actually implement different flows. Like, um, I'll explain this more later, but LibreLane can do much more compared to OpenLane. And if you want to give it a try in your browser, just scan this QR code or check the link out uh, on LibreLane's um, uh, GitHub page, and there you can run a Jupyter Notebook and give it a try. So the technical design goals of LibreLane were to retain the simplicity of OpenLane, so it should still be simple to go from your very log files to the final GDS, to your final layout. Um, you have one configuration file with variables to set for all of the steps. LibreLane should also offer robust packaging. Of course, you can compile all of the tools themselves, but you can't ask this um, from every user. So LibreLane still um, allows uh, to run via Docker. There is a Dockerized method uh, option. But the preferred method, the recommended method, is to use Nix. So we had a talk about uh, Gwix yesterday, and Nix is quite similar. It allows you, um, so Nix will set up the whole environment for you, uh, install all of the tools and their dependencies. So we just have the very same environment uh, as everyone else, and LibreLane will just work for you. And it runs natively on Linux, macOS, and on Windows, you would have to use something like WSL2. 
but even there, then it also runs. And finally, modularity and API access. So um, LibreLane is now uh, um, object-oriented, and it provides an API which allows you to customize, uh, to, to add your own steps and to customize the flow. So as an architectural overview, as you can see, LibreLane consists of four modules. At the very left, we have the state module. A state is an immutable dictionary. So <laughs> what does this mean? A dictionary between design formats that could be, for example, your Verilog, your left, dev, GDS, um, which maps to a file on your disk. And a state is a collection out of that, and a state is immutable. So you cannot change it, which is very important, because this allows us to go back in time, go to the very same state, and then try a different flow, a different route, change some variables, and uh, you don't have to run, rerun the whole flow. Then a step performs a transformation on a state, so gets an, a state as an input, uh, it does something, so for example, we use open road to do the placement of the standard cells, the routing, and so on, and then you get an output state, which contains the new information. You could run all of the steps yourself, um, but in, uh, that, that is not so nice, so we have this flow module, which allows you, for example, to run a sequential flow, one step after another, also things like design exploration, where several flows are run in parallel. And finally, we have this configuration module, um, which just um, collects all of the variables and makes sure that the tabs are correct and configures the steps and, and the flows. All right, and all of this is accessible via the LibreLand Python API, which can be accessed by, by you as the user through Python. You can write Jupyter Notebooks and you can use LibreLand from the command line. All right, time for some proper examples. So what do we need to create a design in LibreLand? Of course, you need your design. So on the right, we have a simple 8-bit counter in system Verilog. Then we need a configuration file, and this is um, yeah, the minimum you need. Design name, this is your top-level cell. Verilog files, where to find them. The clock port and the clock period. LibreLane will use a default STC file, but you can also supply your own STC file. Finally, we invoke LibreLane with the config file. And then it will simply run through the whole flow, execute all of the steps, and in the end, you could view your design using the open road GUI, and that's what we get here. But the cool thing is, you can do this with different PDKs. So you use the same design, same configuration file, and implement uh, this 8-bit counter for different PDKs. So here we have it for SCA 30 GF180 MCU, and also IHB SG13 G2. Same design, different PDKs. So community and support. Now, right now, the PDK support, as already mentioned, we support all three major open source PDKs, Sky130 and GF180 MCU in the main branch, and IHP currently in the development branch, but we will merge this soon also into main. And yeah, you could also use LibreLane with proprietary PDKs. You just need to um, create a configuration for the PDK. And at Heidelberg University, um, we're trying to do this for XFAB. Of course, this is still under an NDA, but if someone else also signs this NDA, um, then you will be, ex uh, be able to access uh, the LibreLane configuration file, will be able to use LibreLane there. Adoption and success stories. So as already said, back at eFabless, OpenLane 2, as it was still called, was already used internally for development successfully. Tiny Tapot, they also started out with OpenLane 2 um, and are now switching to LibreLane. Chip Foundry, um, they uh, also use LibreLane um, for the future. And so Chip Foundry, they are doing uh, MPW services for Sky130. And now um, the next step is Wafer.space, uh, which is doing MPW services for GF180 MCU. And here they will also use LibreLane to implement the designs. So please join the community. So on Fossi Chat, we have a LibreLand channel. You can ask questions, uh, whatever you have on your mind there. And then there's also the documentation. Check it out. It's very easy to get started with LibreLand, thanks to Nix. And you can just implement a simple example design very quickly. So thank you very much. And I'm open to questions now. Thank you. Questions? Um, 
super cool at using Mix. It's always um, been a nice, uh, really nice tool I found. Do you have a binary cache? Uh, yes, yes. And oh, the, Fossi, the Fossi Foundation hosts it. Ah, oh, thanks, Fossi Foundation. Yeah. So uh, this means <laughs> you don't have to recompile all of the tools. Basically, the Fossi Foundation, um, yeah, it, it um, has a, a cache with all of the binaries, and they will just be downloaded to your computer, and you can run them. But you can also, you could also compile them yourself. Um, Nix is reproducible, so you could compare all of the binaries. So how does this work? Compile uh, compared to Silicon Compiler, mm -hmm. and uh, do these two branches need to keep on existing side by side forever, or uh, well, is I'm not there sure. A need to, should we merge? I think the the goal of Silicon Compiler is really a um, a button press solution. So you input um, yeah your design uh, your design files, and you will get your final design uh, with LibreLane. Um, you can do a lot of customization. So you can configure everything in the flow, um, but it's also quite easy just to, uh, for example, this Edbit counter, you've seen the configuration file, um, it just runs through and that's it. And also LibreLane, it does not only run this, this classic flow as it's called with the open source tools, you could also use it with proprietary tools. Just implement steps that, for example, use um, proprietary tool for synthesis. We use this at Ifabless. Uh, for internal development, uh, that is all possible. You can mix and swap, and I'm not sure how this compares to the silicon compiler, but I think there are differences. Okay, maybe you already started to answer my question. Uh, basically, uh, if you could answer shortly uh, a question, uh, why should I use open lane or liberal lane if there is open road flow scripts? Mm -hmm. So, right. OpenRoad flow scripts uh, is a collection of make file and tickle scripts. It's really um, for this purpose and uh, really bleeding edge to try the latest features of OpenRoad. And I think for that it's fine. But LibreLane has a broader focus. Um, we also integrate plugins, for example, like Yosis Slang, so you can just read in your system very log. We also have a flow for VHDL, so you can load VHDL files. And also we do then um, yeah, extraction and LVS and DOC checks afterwards. So all of this is part of the flow. I'm not sure if LVS is part of the flow in open road flow scripts. I don't think so. So again, it's it's different. And you can customize LibreLane a lot. Do your custom. Um, Tiny Tapout, for example, they're also using LibreLane to implement like the, the whole chip, the multiplexer, and they are, uh, have they have custom steps to uh, do the routing of the multiplexer manually, just via the Python API of OpenRoad. What about integrating some form of memory compilers, for example, this colleague has presented <laughs> today mm -hmm. in, in the full flow? I think, um, I mean, you could automate stuff there maybe. I think the easier approach would be just to generate a macro, um, a, an SRO macro and then use this in the flow. So in LibreLand, uh, in the configuration file, you can specify your macros, all of the views, and then you can use them in LibreLand. Um, however, you might even uh, do this in a more automatic way, create a step that then loads um, stuff's uh, SRAM compiler and generates an SRAM on the fly that works best for your design. So I'm an FPGA user. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's just value code or digital code or tuple, whatever, it's just magically in memory. Yeah, so I think the best place to integrate this is in the synthesis tool itself. So because the synthesis tool knows which memory it uses and it can then call the compiler to generate the blocks that it wants. So I think the synthesis tool is the best place to integrate a memory compiler. Mm -hmm. And it would be absolutely possible with LibreLand. You can also create uh, so-called plugins with LibreLand, so you don't need to upstream uh, the steps to, to uh, LibreLand directly. You can just start out in your own development branch, uh, create a plugin, and people could then just use this plugin to get this functionality. All right. Okay. Thank you.